Isaiah is the most often quoted of all the Old Testament prophets. The Savior himself said, Search these things diligently, for great are the words of Isaiah, and all things he spake have and shall be. Isaiah's name in Hebrew means the Lord is salvation. He was a Jerusalem prophet from 740 to 701 BC and was King Hezekiah's chief advisor with great religious and political influence. Isaiah was an educated and gifted writer. He taught God's words in vivid language with poetry, symbols, and metaphors that inspired both Israelites in his own time and generations of prophets throughout all time. His prophecies of the Savior's life and mission, the scattering and gathering of Israel, and the millennium are also important in our day. Many of his words are found in hymns and sacred music. Isaiah's prophecies often have more than one meaning and fulfillment and are best understood with a spirit of prophecy. While it is helpful to understand the Jewish culture and history of his day, we must also learn to apply his prophecies to our own day as modern-day Israel. Chapter 1 begins with a vision of Isaiah, the son of Amaz. He saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem in the days of Isaiah, Jotham, Ahaz, and Hezekiah, kings of Judah. Isaiah warned the Israelites in Judah to cease to do evil with poetic imagery, including parallelism, with repeated or contrasting ideas. Hear, O heavens, and give ear, O earth, for the Lord hath spoken. I have nourished and brought up children, and they have rebelled against me. He said that even an ox and ass knew their master, but Israel did not. Isaiah asked, Why should ye be stricken any more? Ye will revolt more and more. The whole head is sick and the whole heart faint. From the sole of the foot unto the head there is no soundness but wounds, bruises, and putrefying sores. They have not been closed, neither bound up, neither mollified with ointment. Isaiah told Israel they were corrupt from their head to their heart, and would not even try to seek healing. Their country was desolate, and their cities were burned, referring to their capture by the Assyrians that led to the lost ten tribes. The Lord rejected their offerings. To what purpose is the multitude of your sacrifices unto me? I am full of the burnt offerings of rams and the fat of fed beasts, and I delight not in the blood of bullocks, lambs, or he-goats. He said to bring no more vain obligations or sufferings without real intent, or he would hide his eyes from them and not hear their prayers because their hands were full of blood. Isaiah told the people how they could heal their spiritual wounds. Wash and make you clean. Put away the evil of your doings from before mine eyes. Learn to do well. Seek judgment. Relieve the oppressed. Judge the fatherless. Plead for the widow. Come now and let us reason together, saith the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. If ye be will and obedient, ye shall eat the good of the land. The Lord said the people would continue to suffer if they did not change, but he would eventually redeem them in the latter days. Isaiah chapter 2 tells of the temple and how prophets went up mountaintops to receive revelation. It shall come to pass in the last days that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established in the top of the mountains, and shall be exalted above the hills, and all nations shall flow unto it. Many shall say, Come ye and let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob, and he will teach us of his ways. He shall judge among the nations, and rebuke many people, and they shall beat their swords into plowshares, and their spears into pruning hooks. Nations shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war any more. The Israelites in Isaiah's time focused on wealth and idolatry, and he prophesied that the proud and powerful would be humbled at Jesus Christ's second coming. Isaiah chapter 3 tells of the destruction, For Jerusalem is ruined, and Judah is fallen because their tongue and doings are against the Lord, to provoke the eyes of his glory. Their countenance doth witness against them, and they declare their sin as Sodom. They hide it not. Woe unto their soul, for they have rewarded evil unto themselves. Their leaders caused them to go astray. Their society did not care for those who needed help, and evil men took food from the poor. Isaiah chapter 3 describes women who were focused on physical appearance, wealth, and fashion. 
The daughters of Zion are haughty, and walk with stretched forth necks and wanton eyes, walking and mincing as they go, and making a tinkling with their feet. God would smite them with scabs on the crown of their heads, discover their secret parts, and take away their jewelry and fine things. They would lose their physical beauty, well-set hair, and stink. Because they were preoccupied with the world and did not want to help others, they would be humbled, lose their possessions, and suffer from war and destruction. In Isaiah chapter 4, the prophet saw the Lord cleanse the earth from wickedness and redeem his people in the millennium. The Lord protected his people from the physical elements and the wicked. The Lord will create upon every dwelling place of Mount Zion and her assemblies a cloud and smoke by day and the shining of a flaming fire by night. For upon all the glory shall be a defense. And there shall be a tabernacle for a shadow in the daytime from the heat, and for a place of refuge, and for a covert from storm and from rain. Isaiah chapter 5 compares the beloved house of Israel to a vineyard in a very fruitful hill. He fenced it, gathered out the stones, planted it with the choicest vine, built a tower, and made a wine press. He looked that it should bring forth grapes, and it brought forth wild grapes. The Lord cared for his people, but they did not become who he wanted them to be. And he cried, What could have been done more to my vineyard that I have not done in it? He took away the hedge, broke down the wall, and the vineyard would be trodden down. It would not be pruned or digged, laid waste, and no rain would come upon it. The people lost the Lord's protection when they did not obey him, and Isaiah described their suffering and burdens. Woe unto them that join house to house, that lay field to field, till there be no place, that they may be placed alone in the midst of the earth. He warned those who rise early in the morning to follow strong drink until night, and do not regard the work of the Lord or the operation of his hands. Woe unto them that draw iniquity with cords of vanity, and call evil good, and good evil, that put darkness for light, and light for darkness that put bitter for sweet, and sweet for bitter. Woe unto them that are wise in their own eyes, and prudent in their own sight. We learn of Isaiah's prophetic calling in chapter 6. He saw the Lord sitting upon a high and lifted up throne, with seraphims, or angelic beings, who minister in God's court standing above it. They had six wings, which were symbolic of their power to move or act. One cried, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. The posts of the door moved at the voice of him that cried, and the house was filled with smoke. Isaiah said, Woe is me, for I am undone, because I am a man of unclean lips. For mine eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. A seraph placed a live coal from the altar of incense in Isaiah's mouth, that touched his lips, took away his iniquity, and purged his sin. Isaiah heard the voice of the Lord, saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? Then said I, Here am I, send me. Isaiah now felt worthy, and the Lord called him to minister to the people of Judah. In Isaiah chapter 7-9, through 9, the northern kingdom of Israel formed an alliance with Syria to defend itself against Assyria. They united to attack the southern kingdom of Judah, and forced King Ahaz to join them. Ahaz appealed to the Assyrian Empire for help, but Isaiah prophesied the alliance would fail and counseled Ahaz to trust in the Lord for deliverance. The Lord told Isaiah and his son, Shear Joshib, to meet with King Ahaz and tell him the Lord would give him a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive, bear a son, and call his name Emmanuel, meaning God with us. Isaiah prophesied of the destruction of the wicked, the gathering of Israel in the latter days, and the power of Jesus Christ to save his people if they repent. Isaiah chapter 9 prophesied of the Savior, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. The government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Isaiah said the increase of the Savior's government and peace would have no end, but he also knew the people would not seek the Lord and be cut off from Israel, head and tail, branch and rush, in one day. Isaiah chapter 10 teaches that a serious destruction would be a type of the destruction of the wicked at the Savior's second coming, and few would be left. 
Woe unto them that decree unrighteous decrees. They turn aside the needy from judgment, and take away the right from the poor of my people, that widows may be their prey, and they may rob the fatherless. Isaiah asked what they would do in the day of visitation. Who would they flee to for help, and where would they leave their glory? Without the Lord, they would bow down under the prisoners, and he would use other nations to punish his rebellious people. Isaiah chapter 11 tells us, There shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. In that day there shall be a root of Jesse, which shall stand for an ensign of the people. To it the Gentiles seek, and his rest shall be glorious. The stem referred to a tree stump representing the line of kings from David. The rod that grew out of it was a servant in Christ's hands. The root of Jesse was a descendant with the priesthood and keys of the kingdom for an ensign to the people. The Lord would set his hand a second time to recover the remnant of his people, referring to the restoration of his church and latter-day gathering of Israel. Isaiah chapter 12 says, In that day, O Lord, I will praise thee. Though thou wast angry with me, thine anger is turned away, and thou comfortest me. God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. For the Lord Jehovah is my strength, my song, and has become my salvation. With joy shall ye draw water out of the wells of salvation. Ye shall say, Praise the Lord. Call upon his name. Declare his doings among the people. Make mention that his name is exalted. Sing unto the Lord, for he hath done excellent things. This is known in all the earth. Cry and shout, thou inhabitant of Zion. For great is the Holy One of Israel in the midst of thee. And this is Isaiah chapters 1 through 12 in the Old Testament. Look for hidden images located throughout the video. You can support Ponder Fund by visiting our Etsy site with coloring pages and activities to download. Visit our PonderFund.com website and Facebook page to find more fun things to do. And you can listen to these as a podcast. Please like and share these videos with anyone you think might enjoy them. Also, please subscribe to this Ponder Fund YouTube channel and you'll be notified whenever I make new videos. Thanks again for watching and find some time this week to ponder.